listeners and subscribers. Welcome to my little corner of the internet. Now, today, I'm going to try to make this as quick and to the point as I possibly can because I don't want to linger on this topic any more than I already have. I'm sure my viewers are COVID fatigued, but the following information does segue into some important implications. So let's see if you can suss out why. Now, if you've been with me for any length of time, you know I try to do my best to use the words at my disposal to artfully and tactfully illustrate a point, okay? Paint a picture, if you will. It doesn't always work. I'm not that smart, especially not smarter than anyone else. I just speak on what I know and what I've learned. In reality, I'm just a dude with a search engine and a video editor, and I admit at times that I can be flat wrong. I don't have many subscribers or views, but it's not always the most visible information that's the best. And I know I tend to say some of the same things from time to time, but that's because a lot of the scenarios just haven't changed. So, as usual, we're going to get into some touchy topics, and I hope that most of you can refrain from being triggered. But, let me first start by asking a few questions. Do you think that leaders, or heck, anyone in power, always knows what they're doing? Because if something is new, or novel, unprecedented, they can't really have full experience with it, right? So blind faith won't serve anyone well in that sense. And I anticipate most of us can agree that rarely does blind faith lead to anything good. Now, on the surface, the following is going to seem like a small nuance, but it doesn't take much to see how things can easily be adapted beyond the context I'm providing today. Because if you thought something like flying was cumbersome after 9-11, we're in for an entirely new ballgame due to coronavirus. We're talking forced face masks to board flights, blood and antibody tests, otherwise known as immunity passports, temperature checks for passengers, and even forced vaccines. These things are all literally being thrown around right now for air travel, and even some businesses and schools are considering going down the same road. Now, while for most flights, they don't require the face mask once you're on board, blood tests are becoming a reality. The Dubai-based airline Emirates has become the first airline to conduct rapid 10-minute blood tests at departure gates, and they won't be alone. Even the TSA may soon require proof of a negative COVID test result, or at least tests that show you're positive for COVID antibodies. Which, as you should know, scientists have up and down cast doubts on this process. Case in point, some people have taken up to four antibody tests and were still unable to determine conclusive results. On top of that, TSA is also preparing for passenger temperature checks, okay? Not just with the temperature guns, but with thermal cameras and scanners, even though as we can see here and many other sources, they don't always work and they appear to be a scam for certain sellers to profit. So if even these measures won't stop the spread of COVID, That leads us to flesh out the vaccine. And before we even go down that road, full disclosure, I'm not some rabid conspiracy theorist or a dogmatic anti-vaccine activist. Yes, I do believe conspiracies are real, and no, I don't take vaccines myself. However, I do not think others shouldn't have the freedom to take them. People should be free to take the shot if they want and not take it if they don't, but when it comes to a possible COVID vaccine, there are some things that shouldn't be callously overlooked. There's a great urgency that the pandemic has caused, and because of that urgency, any vaccine which might show little to even no signs of promise will still probably be fast-tracked without proper testing and approval processes. You see, other drugs and vaccines, they typically go through rigorous close study and spend appropriate time in clinical trials to determine potential long-term negative side effects. Unfortunately, those safeguards will likely be disregarded and cast aside in the case of coronavirus. What that means is reasonable apprehensions that something not having gone through those rigors could be dangerous and I do fear that legitimate concerns of an unsafe vaccine will be drowned out by unfounded and dubious claims of safety backed by monetary and political motivation. That right there indicates that some of the people pushing for the vaccine won't be pushing it because they think it's effective or safe, but to promote their special interests or just to fill their wallets. Now that should indeed stir up some consternation. But don't take what I'm saying out of context. Remember what I said. I do believe people should have the freedom to take the shot or the freedom to opt out of it. Nevertheless, as I mentioned before, some airports have begun to consider the possibility of mandatory immunity passports, meaning that not only might someone have to provide a negative COVID test result, but people might also be required to be vaccinated to board a plane. In addition to that, there's the possibility certain businesses and schools could require them as well, and that's a bad idea. Again, 
I hope we can agree that the government shouldn't have the only and final say over you or your child's health and body. That would be truly overstepping and overreach. I mean, get this, there's women who can smite the innocent in the womb, yet soon it appears that neither man nor woman will be able to deny forced penetration into their bodies. And to borrow from a political argument, I guess you can chalk me up to being pro-choice when it comes to vaccines. But in any case, expect vaccine publicity campaigns and an all-out information war to help coax mandated vaccination into a reality. But don't forget this. Officials keep telling us that a person can contract COVID-19, recover from it, and still not be immune to it. But if that's true, if you could get it, recover, and not be immune, how exactly will a vaccine provide that immunity? Because if you don't already know how a vaccine works, let me give you a perhaps oversimplified lesson. They inject you with small amounts of the virus, as well as other dubious chemicals, so that theoretically you can build antibodies to fight it and produce a modicum of immunity. That's essentially the same thing that would happen if you contracted it organically. So it's strange that they say you can't develop some immunity on your own, which isn't even true. There's typically always some immunity after having contracted a virus. And if you don't believe me, let's take a quick read. Quote, to be clear, most experts do think an initial infection from the coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2 will grant people immunity to the virus for some amount of time. That is generally the case with acute infections from other viruses, including coronaviruses. Unquote. And from another source, we have this, quote, A new study offers a glimmer of hope in the fight against the coronavirus. Nearly everyone who's had the disease, regardless of age, sex, or severity of illness, eventually makes antibodies. Unquote. It even goes on to say, quote, The new study also eased a worry that only some people, those who were severely ill, for example, might make antibodies. In fact, the level of antibodies did not differ by age or sex, the researchers found, and even people who had only mild symptoms produced a healthy amount. Unquote. So what I'm saying is, don't let anyone tell you that you can't have immunity to the virus if you've contracted it. And on the very off chance you do contract it, and not everyone can, virtually everyone recovers. Anyway, if they do come out with a vaccine, even if it's imperfect and completely unsafe, they'll still say it doesn't cause harmful effects. And unfortunately for citizens, fear and misdirection from officials in the media will probably overpower logic and reason. After all, these conglomerates are no strangers to exploiting those collective weaknesses in the masses. They've already been filling us up with false hopes of immunity and exaggerated claims months or even years before a vaccine even exists. So if it does arrive, it isn't going to be a magical life-saving antidote or an economy-saving miracle. The flu, for example, still kills thousands every year, even though we have a vaccine for it. On top of that, the air has been polluted with misinformation about the true effectiveness of vaccines in the first place. Because here's a fun fact, virtually all vaccines only provide temporary lengths of protection, which is why people must routinely keep taking them. Therefore, we should do everything we can to reach the people in our lives who might be susceptible to pro-vaccine propaganda so they can make an informed decision. Anyway, Carter signing off.